In this video, today we're talking about what $350,000 gets you in Canton, Michigan. Hey guys, welcome to Living in Detroit's YouTube. My name is Matt Talbot, I am your host. My team and I help people just like you every single day move to here to Southeast Michigan and we absolutely live for it. We get calls, texts, and emails from people that want to live in the area, that have more questions, that are thinking about moving to town and we absolutely love it. So today in this video, we want to give you a tour of a subdivision here in Canton Township, which is a suburb of Metro Detroit. This subdivision was actually built in the 70s and 80s and there's a lot of like homes like this throughout Canton. So we want to give you a little showcase of what the subdivision's like. Um, the home we're going to show you is $350,000 price point, so mid 300s. But also the subdivision has a lot of different other flavors of properties as well too. So we really want to dive deeper to show you what it's like to live in this sub, what it's like to live here in Canton, and what the mid 300s get you. So like I was saying, this subdivision is actually at Sheldon Road and Hanford Road. So for those of you who don't know the area, Sheldon Road is a road that passes through all the way through Canton, goes to Northville. Uh, before that, Plymouth, it keeps going uh, to Novi and keeps going south as well too. Eventually runs into um, the, the south side of Canton. So um, Canton, Michigan is a suburb of Metro Detroit. It's about 30 minutes or so to the city of Detroit. It's about 25 minutes or so to Ann Arbor. So it's a very, very central location. And Canton's a very sought out area. A lot of people from actually all over the world move here to Canton. So it's a very diverse community in a lot of different ways. Um, they developed this area for the most part, at least this part of town in central Canton, really in the 60s, 70s, and 80s for the most part. So as you can see, there's a lot of variety of houses. Back during this time period, it was a different setup as far as the type of construction that you get. A lot of times in today's world, you see a lot of the more modern construction is more uh, colonials and stuff like that. But as you can see, we have ranch homes, colonial homes. There's a lot of split levels and tri-levels as well in this subdivision. So what's cool about the subdivision is you get a lot of flavor and there's a lot of different options. You know, some people have been here for 30 years. Some people have renovated multiple times. So it sort of depends, which gives you a wide variety of pricing. Um, for the most part, a subdivision like this here in Canton really sells from, you know, the mid 200s all the way up to the mid 400s, depending um, for a lot of these houses. They're not the big, you know, three, 4,000 square foot colonials by any means, but you have a variety of different flavors in subdivisions like this. So like I said, we're at Sheldon Hamford Road, um, only about a mile from Ford Road, which Ford Road is a, another really main strip here in Canton. It goes all the way through uh, Canton. That's where all your shopping is. Um, there's an Ikea over there. I mean, really everything your heart desires for that Midwest feel all the way down Ford Road. It's a fairly busy road and that, but at the same time, being local here is very, very close to all that stuff. So we want to show you our listing that we have coming up here as well too. It's at a 350 price point. So mid 300s price point is an affordable option for a lot of people. That's why it's a very sought out house. Uh, that house is going to be a 70s build, which we'll jump into in a minute, but we want to show you sort of what, you know, 350,000 give or take gets you here in Canton Township. So we're in front of the subject property. This is actually our listing off Botsford in the subdivision. As you can see, it's a 1970s build, colonial as we refer to this. Um, I like the shutters around the windows, you know, attached garage. So like I said, what's interesting about how they built homes back in the day is there's just a variety. If you look at the neighbors, there's like a big ranch next door. The one next to that is a, uh, this house over here, I think is a splitter tri-level. Another ranch here. There's a lot of ranches in the subdivision. There's a sprawling ranch across the street, another colonial here. So like I was saying, you get a variety of different homes, which is nice because you got, got a bunch of different flavors. And obviously a home built in the seventies through the years has had different updates. So. You know, um, I wouldn't say this is like your brand new construction showstopper type house that you know we're gonna we're gonna show you and just wow you by any means. But the point is, is to show you a real flavor of what that mid 300s gets you in a city like Canton here in Southeast Michigan. So we're gonna give you a quick tour inside, show you some of the pros and cons of this house that I think you know that we have here, and and kind of give you the quick tour. So let's go ahead and do it. Okay, so we're inside now. Like I was saying, uh, these homes were built in the 70s, so different layouts and stuff like that. Um, I want to give you the quick tour here, um, walking through. So a lot of these colonials are kind of like this. Some of them are a little bit different where the garage is heavily weighted on the right side of this house. So everything kind of shoots to the left and wraps around the garage. Coat closet up front, you walk in, this is going to be your formal living space. So you see, see a lot of these in these 70s and 80s build, a big formal living space, which is nice. And then it always flows into a good opening and a formal dining that's attached to the kitchen. 
okay? So we see these types of builds a lot. Sometimes there's a wall there um, with just the door, so it's more like sectioned off. This one, they renovated years back um, and they put new cabinetry in. So I'm sure when they did the renovation, this was actually a wall that they took down and re-renovated to give more cabinet space and open up the floor plan a little bit, which is nice. So if you're cooking and someone's hanging out in the dining room, you get that co-mingling, but it still feels like a separate space. I think for a while, some of the new constructions the last couple of years were like really big open spaces. I know people like open floor plans, but I think some of the construction that I saw was almost too open. So I still like segmented rooms to some extent for a lot of families in particular. I think as your kids get older, when the, the kids are babies, like, oh, it's fine, it's all in one space. It's easy, the kids get older, I think it's nice to be able to separate. But anyway, that's just one take. So um, as you roll into the kitchen here, like I said, they renovated a few new years ago. They have a nice granite countertop in here, um, a higher end cabinetry as well. Um, they updated some of the appliances. They love their old stove, so they kept that in here. Um, but that being said, they updated the, the refrigerator as well too. Um, and then you then you roll back into the, the second living space, um, which is usually more kept for the family and stuff like that too. For the most part, people keep the front room usually as a more formal living space, sitting area. And this is your more you know, family living space as well too. Breakfast nook here can be used for the family gatherings or for breakfast and stuff like that compared to the more formal living space. So clients been here for a while. They're looking for a little bit different change of pace. That's why we're selling the place. Um, so again, uh, just some different flavors of, of what you have. Um, rolling upstairs, you got a half bath on your left here. Nick can poke in there. Granite countertops, they updated that cabinetry as well too. Uh, I think that was a few years ago. Jumping upstairs, four bedrooms upstairs, and two full baths, which is sometimes rare, so I'll show you that. Their furniture is pretty big, so these rooms feel smaller than they are, um, but this is the first bedroom, uh, closet over there, not a walk-in. Um, the shared bathroom, so if Nick goes ahead and jumps in there, they updated the cabinetry as well to match downstairs, granite countertops. And again, this is not brand new, but they re they redid the whole bathroom. So complete tile would have looked a lot different in the 70s, probably would have been pink or blue, the small square tile, but they redid that in here as well too. So these type of upgrades are gonna determine whether a listing like this is 275,000, 300,000, 350,000, and then maybe if it's completely renovated, this same house might be 375 or 400. So if it's a newer renovation. So because it's been renovated, it's a few years back, we're kind of, we're gonna uh, list it in the mid 300s. I would be surprised if it didn't sell over. Our listings typically do. That being said, this is sort of like the updates that you'll get in a Canton, Michigan in the mid 300s. So um, this is a office space that they have up here. So uh, no closet in here um, that they turned into an office, which is really nice for work from home right now. An additional bedroom. This one's a little bit bigger than the first one, I would say. You get your closet over here. Again, it's rare to have a walk-in closet from the 70s. And then what's unique about this house, a lot of the 60s, 70s, and definitely 50s builds in the primary suite, they didn't usually have an additional bathroom. This one does. So good size primary here. Like I said, the furniture that the, the client has is big furniture, it's pretty bulky, but this room is actually a pretty good size. I didn't turn the light on in here, that might help for you, Nick, apologize. Um, so this room's a pretty good size, additional primary ensuite. So again, this is sometimes a rare feature that you don't always get here, but if Nick wants to go ahead and follow me in here, um, they retiled the shower, again, granite countertops, newer cabinets, uh, tiled the floor as well too, retiled a few years ago. So you get the ensuite in the primary, which will be a big selling point for people looking in this price point here in Canton, Michigan, or some of the surrounding communities, because it's kind of rare. So starter homes, a lot of starter families and stuff buy these types of houses, and a lot of times they're doing that shared bathroom, right? Three bedrooms or four bedrooms all shared on the second floor for one bathroom for these 70s builds. So this is a nice feature you get sometimes, you don't always get. And so uh, we'll show you the basement, which is a little bit more dated, but we wanna show you what that looks like. This feature is very common in homes like this. The garage is to my right, and then you have a mud room with your washer and dryer that actually closes off the basement, which is nice. So, you know, for family members, the kids coming in, kicking off their muddy shoes and keep it all in here and not dirty up the house. I like that feature. Um, you see washer and dryers a lot on the uh, second floor now these days, but 
So first floor, two, pretty standard two car garage, not much to see in there. And then years ago, they finished the basement with these homes built in the 70s, 80s, 60s, what have you. It's just the reality of the situation here in Southeast Michigan. There's gonna be a lot of different variety of what updates where people have spent the money through the years. And so, as you can see, the basement is finished, but it's more finished from a uh, 70s and it has been redone. So at one point, these walls were probably that fake wood um, board and they were repainted. So it makes it look a little bit more updated. Again, what's nice though, is like it is still a finished space. You could use this, uh, you know, for hanging out. I think that is a good starting point. You know, you had some flooring in here, maybe swap out the drop ceiling. You have a whole different vibe. But again, fluorescent ceilings, I can never say that properly. You got an old fireplace down here as well. They have a, a refrigerator, your furnace is in the back room. So again, a little bit more dated down here, but that's where it just determines where your price ends up, okay? If your price is 400, maybe you end up with a similar house where the basement's been recently, more recently renovated, right? There's gonna be some pros and cons as you're looking here in Southeast Michigan or any marketplace, of course, to understand, you know, where you fit from a budgetary perspective, where you, where, where your wants and needs are. So a lot of people might trade the basement for, like I said, the ensuite extra bathroom upstairs or what have you. So wanted to show you down here, wanted to show you the reality of the situation in the mid 300s currently here in Canton, Michigan. And uh, yeah, let's jump back upstairs. So depending on budget, location, all that different stuff is really going to be dependent on what areas we're looking at. So where's work is always a good question. If you're moving to the area, you know, how far is your commute? Like I said, Canton's a very, very central location uh, for a lot of different reasons for a lot of people. A lot of people that work downtown or Ann Arbor, it's another one of those central link uh, locations. A little bit more affordable than some of the other areas. Uh, you can check out our other video, which is Cherry Hill Village. That's sort of like a newer part of town. There's a lot of newer construction around that area. You're really kind of, you know, 450 to 900 and up in that area. So different price point, but this part of town, you really can be in the two, 300s, find a nice home. These are solidly built homes. You wanna make sure they've been well-maintained, but if you can do that and find the right agent, you can find something that's an affordable option for you here in a city like Canton. So if this video provided any value to you, uh, please hit subscribe and tap for more notifications. If Feel free to comment. Let us know if there's other areas or locations or price points that you want featured. We wanna to give tours, we wanna to help continue to educate you guys here on the Living in Detroit channel.